So this is it, we're gonna be reviewing B Station hard drive from Synology. So what it is, it is a network enabled drive. Normally you would find drives with USB port that you can plug into a PC or your phone. This one has a LAN port, internet connection, so you can connect it to your router. And this allows you to access the data on this drive without any cables. You can do that on your Wi-Fi, either from your phone or laptop or somewhere away from your home, from your friend's home. So this is the beauty of NAS, the Network Attached Storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the promises that Synology have made about this drive and actually check if it's true, if it's not, how good it is. We're going to go through the pros and the cons about this device. So let's have a look at the promises. So the first and the main promise is that you can have your own private cloud in your home. So you can physically hold on to your data. It's not like a Dropbox or a Google Photos or something like that, that your photos can be converted on their terms. So you lose quality, you lose data, you don't know who is looking at those images. It's not 100% safe, really. This one is at your home all the time and you're in control of your data. So what you can do is that you can back up your folders on your computer. You can synchronize your folders just like Dropbox would uh, allow you or Google Drive. You can also back up your cloud accounts to this device. So, so far, Dropbox, Google uh, Drive and um, Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft Drive. Those three cloud services, whatever data you got there, they can be synchronized to this device. So you can back it up. And you can also back up your external drives. If you have existing USB drives, you can plug them into these ports and they'll be backed up to this device. Just keep in mind that this is a one drive device. So it means it has no backup. You will need to actually have another drive or maybe you want to back it up to the cloud, to your Google Drive from this device but if this drive fails inside your data will be gone or you will need to recover the data so make sure you back this thing up there are other models available on Synology with two drives inside which means they are mirroring each other so if something happens to one of the drives on this device your data is copied to another drive so you got this protection this redundancy so other thing what Synology is promising is no subscription fees in the cloud platforms the prices are going up every year and your needs for storage space are growing every year as well so at some point you will end up in a situation where it costs too much to store your data online and you feel like a prisoner in this situation with this thing you buy this device and you keep it you will also have a look at possibilities to change this hard drive inside for a bigger drive there are people out there that need more than four terabytes so we will have a look at the possibility to add bigger drive in there or maybe instead of hard drive add SSD in there. So SSDs are five times faster than hard drives and see what the performance difference is. The other thing that Synology is promising is organizing your photos, your multimedia. So we will have a look how easy is it to back up your phone photos and videos to this device and check how easy it is to actually access those photos and videos and is it even possible to do such thing as video streaming so when organizing these photos the features you get to filter down these photos is a uh, timeline you get geographical locations you get face recognition you can get object recognition all these things and not just that per person you can have several users having their own storage space on this device so it's encrypted it's safe and it's inaccessible to other users. So your friends can actually share this device with you. What I also want to point out is that this device, looking at the hardware, is really limited. The other thing that you get with this device that you normally would need to pay quite significant money for is uh, object recognition. Normally you would need to have plus series Synology NAS with at least two gigabytes of RAM to be able to have this object recognition where you search saying show me all the photos where there are food or beach or any, anything where you can think of. This device has one gigabyte of RAM and Realtek CPU. Normally this wouldn't be possible with other devices so this is a really good 
way and cheap way to get this feature what normally you would pay money for so maybe let's have a look at the specs a little bit what is inside this thing so it comes with this four terabyte hard drive it's seagate based hard drive but it's uh, relabeled as an OG drive so it is power efficient probably going to hibernate when it's inactive and so good way of having more storage space for less of the money but for some people four terabyte might not be enough they might need eight terabytes so we will have a look at possibility to actually upgrading this thing also it's just a one bay device which means there is no backup you'll need to connect a usb drive to back this thing up to something or at least back it up to the cloud or something because if you when you lose the data on this drive that's gone the cpu inside is a realtek 1619b which means it has also transcoding chip this graphics chip which allows converting videos from 4k to 1080p for example if you're trying to access videos remotely away from the home and your internet is slow it will automatically by definition convert this video into smaller video so you can actually watch your videos remotely or maybe even in home network when your old tv do not support 4k it's supposed to convert it into a smaller version so you can actually still stream it it only has one gigabyte ddr4 memory which is technically enough for backing things up and accessing your photos or videos there is no ability to install apps on this device in the same way as plus series or other uh, nas models from synology range maybe for that reason one gigabyte is going to be enough but we're going to have a look at that later on so you also get uh, usb ports at the back standard usb 3 and usb c they are po both five gigabit speed the lan port is one gigabit port when you get this device you will have a lan cable included so you need to think about it and it's also going to come with three years warranty so a little bit of peace of mind for three years so let's try and set this thing up so what we need to do is connect power and connect the LAN cable power and LAN connects to your router or your switch if you have a switch connect that and if it doesn't start blinking already press the power button and wait for the beep so there it is a beep which means it's ready to set up so what we need to do is look at the bottom of this drive there is a qr code if you scan that code it will take you to the website so you can actually log into synology or create a synology account and set this thing up so first step is to scan the code at the back of the nas open the browser read the terms accept it do not agree to share your analytics unless you want to connect your lan port if you haven't connect the power if you haven't and if it's orange we are good to go now we need to press the power button for four seconds at the back of your NAS until you hear the beep that's a beep release the button so this is it we are ready to give it a name Let's keep this same one. So we, now we have options for two apps. It doesn't describe very well what each of these apps are about, but let's click on one and have a look. So this is B files up. So I can see that they have created a dedicated photo and files up for this device. Other Snorgy devices have drive app instead of B files, that's how it's called, for synchronizing a folder. Whatever you put in this folder is copied to a NAS and other way around, whatever you put in a NAS comes down to this folder on your device. Another app is Synology Photos. Here it's called B Photos. So, so let's have a look at B files. Sign in. untrusted connection this is not a good start i wish synology would have certificates purchased for for a user since you're using this device in local network there is no issue 
about this trust, but if this was used in business environment, this could be an issue. In the home environment, I will proceed. That's fine. So now we can add some files, I guess. Let's click plus, create folder, say add, add the folder. So we can upload some photos or files, add. So what are the other options? We can add cloud services. So it looks like we will need to use the web interface for adding those as well. Anyways, we have our files. How easy is the sharing? Let's do that. We can rename it, open original, and we can share it. Share, share, unshare. So you can actually add a password for sharing, or you can simply have a link. So let's try that link. And now I can see it's using Quick Connect, this uh, proxy service for the Synology. It's kind of VPN, secure tunnel between the your location and the NAS on this hard drive. And there you go. That's the picture I shared. They can either download it or print it or do what they want with it. Pretty neat. So that was B files. What about B photos? Let's have a look at B photos. So let's try it. Sign in. Enable photo backup. So this is very similar to Synology Photos app, where you can also backup your photos. So you can choose if you want to back them up only in the local network or also when you're away from home, or you can back up photos only and not videos. So let's click enable. So what is happening now? So you can also delete photos now from your phone to save some space, some storage space on your phone. So this is another thing which I was worried about. You need to keep this app open in order to back up your files. With WD, NAS, you can close the app and it will still back up your photos. With this one, the app needs to be open. Okay, let's have a look at the photos we have here. Where are those filters? Can we search for a cat? No, we cannot. So where are those AI features in the phone app? I cannot see. Oh, if you click albums, if you click albums, this is where you're gonna find your face recognition, objects and places and tags and videos. Can we manually upload some files? We can. There's been a few minutes and there's still no people or subjects or places. Let's have a look how all this management looks like in a laptop environment. Okay, let's have a look how web interface look like if you log into this device from your laptop. So you need to go to portalbsynology.com, then log in. Okay, that's our B station. So we get B files up. So you could see on the phone, the, the options were quite limited. So you could back up your phone and not the cloud or external backup. So here you got options for computers, for example, sync your computer with folder. So let's download the app, B station. Okay, there is no B station. Cloud services, so this is where we can link our Dropbox. Allow the connection to the Dropbox. Now we can choose, is it gonna be two-way sync or one-way sync from Dropbox to B station? And say it's two, two-way. Click done. So only options you have is Dropbox, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive. If you have any other cloud platform, you may need to consider getting a Synology NAS, like proper NAS, rather than this home solution B station. So you can pause it or unlink it or delete it. Moving on to USB backup. I've connected OneDrive right now. Let's see what happens if we click backup now. It says no external drive connected. So we'll need to have a look what sort of 
file systems vStation support. So you also have an option to add external drives to know what is the difference between USB backup and external drive. So let's have a look at B photos. Are there going to be those AI features available or not? Let's have a look if we can download this for a desktop. We didn't have luck with the other one. There's no app for the Mac. So now we have our photos uploaded there. Let's have a look at the filters we have. So you can look at the videos only or photos only or both. So let's click on albums. So now you can see after some time it does scan through the photos and index them and, uh, and try and make sense of the objects and places and people. So we click on people. You can actually s uh, link those people together. It thinks that's a different person, but it's not. So you can say two people, exactly the one. So it's exactly how I want it actually. I want the same photo to be under two different categories. For example, animal and cat. So it's supposed to belong to those two. So you can, you don't need to waste your time going through different categories, finding the same thing. Can we actually search for someone? So let's say find Ed. And you can, we did find Ed. Can we find a cat? And it does find a cat, so it's pretty cool. So far, so good. We also have a timeline. So if you go to recently added, you will have a timeline right on the side. So you can go through years of memories. So we did see that we can create and merge people. We can have uh, subjects and objects. What about the places? Also, you can actually get the metadata of the photo and see where exactly this photo was taken. I wish there was a map view, unfortunately not on the B station. And then obviously you can add your manual tags to photos. So you have exactly the same features on the web-based interface. You can request photos and check what you have shared and you can share those files also from here. So if you go to B files, it's also very similar to a phone app. So you can have your files, you can sync your computer, try that again, B-series. I think Synology haven't added a desktop app, but there was definitely going to be an app to synchronize your computer and your, and your NAS. Just like you would have a Dropbox sync box, you will also have it on a Mac. I wish there was a way to format the drive because I have connected the external drive but the file system on the drive I believe is not supported with this B station. On the standard NAS models you could wipe your data, format the drive and, and choose correct file system but with B stations seemingly it's not possible. Okay, let's have a look at system settings. What options do we get? So in system settings we can see how much storage space is available, how much we have used and you can actually, it breaks it down to what, how much B files are actually using, how much is uh, photos, B photos using. This is where you can create users. This is not something I saw on a mobile app because I think there was no mobile app for doing such thing. To create users, you have to go on the website, on the web laptop based uh, interface, and then you can invite a user send them invite link and then they'll have their own storage space where they can back up their photos and uh, do exactly what you're doing. So if you go to system settings you can you can play with a name for the B station. You can enable a hard drive hibernation which means if no one is accessing any data from the drive those drives will just go into sleeping mode. Also, if you want to sell the drive, you'll need to unlink it and do the factory reset. If you don't do factory reset, that uh, those files will be still available on, on those drives. If you don't do factory reset, the person who buys this drive will still have an access to your files. Then there's a backup and restore option, so you can actually back the entire thing to C2 Cloud, for example. That's Synology dedicated cloud. 
which allows you to back up your entire NAS and you can access those files remotely. Nothing to do with the NAS. Then obviously you can update the firmware. This is supposed to be automatic process. And some advanced settings. You can get email alerts if there's a power loss or anything uh, important going on with your NAS. If there's something not working properly, you need some support, you can enable access to those um, support services so Synology can actually connect and fix it for you. Make sure it's only on when you need support. And this is also a neat feature, local access. So if you don't trust the internet, you can enable local access and you can use IP address to directly connect to this uh, NAS. It asks us to create a separate username for this reason. So you can add a password and a username. The other feature which I would enable is SMB service. If you enable SMB service then you will be able to see your B station here on your Mac or Windows. And you can actually get into it and put files in there. And with SMB enabled you can just then go to Finder and click connect, connect to a server, then add the IP address you selected, click connect, then it will ask for this uh, username what you created. This username is different than the username you used to set up the NAS itself. This is just SMB service and then you have access to home, media or time machine where you can choose what, what do you want to map to your Mac. You want to set up like a time machine or just a home folder or media folder. Let's click home. So now since we have mapped the home folder we can see actually what's what's in that NAS like you would have normally with your Windows Explorer or Mac Finder. So you can see that everything what is um, what you upload through the files up, B files, it's in files folder. Whatever you upload in photos, it's in photos folder. So you can see your mobile backups. So you can manually copy and paste your photos this way. So you don't need to use your phone. But it is recommended to upload all photos using your app either on your phone or on Mac, but using the app itself so it can index properly and, and uh, build a database for all your files on your NAS. I found this BStation app on, uh, on the website here. So if you want to download um, BStation for a Mac or Windows, you can go to b.synology.com and then slash BStation downloads. This is where you can find for Windows or Mac. And that's it. We can sign in. And that's it, click OK. OK, let's try another feature. Um, let's try and access that NAS directly using IP. Because if you connect through the Quick Connect or through the website, it uses this proxy. So every time you want to talk to this device or transfer files, you need to go to Synology server somewhere, you know, in the data center, and then bounce back to this drive. So it's just unnecessary step. So if you the IP you provided earlier. This is what you're going to put in your browser to access the NAS. So you can see it's using port 6600 and that's the username you created and the password you created. As you can see it's more responsive and this is it. This is how you speed things up. Now I want to test if um, USB adapter for SD cards will work. I'll try and connect the flash drive to this adapter. Let's try, let's try and find USB drive now connected to the adapter and the flash drive is also not found. Now I connected the USB drive to a Synology directly through the USB port. Let's have a look if that will work. And the answer is no. So after a few seconds, flash drive connected to USB port on the Synology actually did appear. And you can see what is on it. So this is how you access external drives. If you want to back up things on your Synology to a USB drive or flash drive, you'll need to use USB backup option. And you choose which USB device you want to use, select a folder you want to back up to, or have auto backup option. 
which means you don't need to manually click any button. Once you plug it into a Synology, it will automatically know what to do with that particular USB drive. The question is, how can you safely eject this uh, USB drive? And I cannot see an option to do that. So let's manually unplug it then. Okay, I want to see if I can connect a docking station to this thing. Is that going to work? What I did pick up was the flash drive, which I connected earlier. So that confirms that flash drives can work. It just takes a couple of minutes actually for Synology to pick it up. And as you can see, it can pick up the USB drive, but not SSD or uh, SD card. It could be something to do with format. So you can see, I can go into a flash drive, but I cannot see SSD or SD card. It could be the file system on it. So that means you can use adapters like this on the Synology. I have just connected uh, this docking station to DS718 Plus, which is Plus series model, not B station. And it can see every single thing connected to it, either SD card, SSD, USB flash drive, or uh, NVMe SSD. But these things were not picked up on um, a B station. So for that reason, I formatted um, one of the NVMe SSD into ext4 just to check if file system actually plays the role in this situation. Put some files on it and let's have a look. So let's reload the page and see what happens. Hmm. As you can see now, it picked up a few more things. So you can now see Rocket Nano. This is NVMe SSD where I put the photos. It has ext4 file system, so that must be a key. The other thing which is seen was USB drive. And also now we have a Lodge link. So it takes a couple of minutes actually to pick up these things. I had to connect and reconnect for it to, to actually detect the SD card and now finally after so many attempts, SD card is seen and you can actually get to those pictures. So that's good news, a little bit clumsy, but it does work. So that's a win. You can connect docking station to this thing and it will work. Good news. Just no eject button for some reason. Since we enabled SMB and created this username and password, I was curious, can we actually get into SSH at the back of this NAS? And the answer is no, because SSH is not enabled. That's also something that you manually need to enable on your Synology, normal Synology. So this Synology is not an exception. And there is no option to enable SSH, therefore you cannot get at the back of it. So let's do some speed testing. I just mapped a network drive, this new B station, and uh, let's have a test. And what sort of test we could do? Let's start with one gigabyte test. And you can see speeds are 50 megabytes a second, 50 megabytes. So that's write speed. I think I'm gonna connect through the LAN instead of Wi-Fi to test the best possible speed. So there is no bottlenecks in this setup. But before we do that, let's finish this Wi-Fi test. And the read speed goes up to 50 megabytes a second. So now you can see I have connected my laptop through the LAN port. So it's supposed to have one gigabit speed, bandwidth at least. So let's test it again. So now let's give it a test uh, through the LAN port so you can see significant improvement. So it's one, 105, 107 megabytes a second. That's, what, that's the speed you would normally see on the regular NAS with one gigabit port, so there is no real bottleneck. So that's really good write speed, really good. I'm really happy with the read write speeds, 100%. So let's give it a test in AJA. So you can see write is 110, read 112, based on 256 megabyte file. So we could change that to something bigger, maybe four gigabyte. So this is four gigabyte file being transferred. Pretty stable, 100 megabytes a second. 
very happy. So now it's reading, reading 4 gigabyte file. Also looks very stable, stable 80 megabytes a second. So you can see the results are very good, very good. I, I'm happy with the results. Okay, let's have a look how it integrates with ATV. So we have our VLC player here because this device do not have DLNA. If it had DLNA, you could be able to connect to this device using TV built-in feature for streaming net from network card drives. So if you don't have it, luckily SMB will take care of it. So SMB enabled will allow the VLC player or um, similar players to connect to this drive through this protocol and stream. So let's have a look. Um, if we go to local network, we find B station, I need to log in and there we see home folder, time machine folder, USB folders, which is really great. You could technically even access some media from USB connected to this thing. It's good. But let's have a look how it performs with um, a built in hard drive, built in media. So let's go to photos. Let's play some random video. That's good. Another MP4 video. This is a 4K file, 60 frames per second. Also seem to be playing just fine. Let's have a look if uh, movie files will play as well. So this is never ending story and it also works just fine. So, so there's a way to actually stream your videos from this thing to your TV. That's a good, good news. So let's have a look how would streaming remotely look like. So we, we saw that locally on the TV, it streams just fine. But what about our uh, 3G or 4G or 5G network? Let's have a look at one of the videos. So you need to enable HTTP streaming, more settings, play or HTTP, done. So let's try again. And this is 1080p, 60 frames per second, Rem local streaming, this is local streaming. We need to switch off Wi-Fi. So let's try and stream this video over 4G. Let's see what happens. So this is 1080p, 60 frames per second, remote streaming. It took a while. I think it downloaded the entire video in order to play it. So I'll say this is a no win. Let's try a 4K video. This is a 4K video, 60 frames per second. They seem to be coping just fine. Inside there's a graphics chip in this uh, NAS. So this might be doing the, all the work conversion. So let's try this five minute video. It seem to be just fine. Try this 4K again. Yes, I'd say I'm happy. So the final thing we can test is power consumption. And uh, this is how much electricity it actually uses to run the device. So this is in access mode. So it uses around seven to eight watts. When it was in hibernation mode, I could see that dropping down to around four, three watts. So half the normal usage. So if you're wondering electricity wise, how much is gonna cost you every day, then you can see that on average, running this for a few days, I could see that device using 0 0.12, 0 0.16 kilowatt hours per 24 hours 
and if you do the math, if the kilowatt hour costs around 30 cents or 30 pence, that will cost you five pence a day to run this device. But also remember in winter time, when you need to heat your home anyway, this costs you nothing. Okay, before we get to pros and cons, I'm just gonna compare this RB station with other available models like value series and plus series. So what's the main difference between these three categories is that this B station is basically a basic backup device. Basically, USB drive on steroids. You can connect it through the LAN rather than USB. And it comes with free apps. So you get things like uh, cloud sync, so you can synchronize your cloud. You can uh, enable SMB service, so you can actually link this hard drive with your laptop or multiple laptops or computers. And there's a file sync, so you can synchronize certain folder on your phone or your computer and you can also back up your photos also from your phone mainly or from your computer and uh, you get a few extras like object recognition or face recognition and uh, the other thing you get is USB copy so things you connect through USB drives flash drives things like that SD cards you can back them up and uh, time machine backup if you have a Mac or if you have a Windows built-in backup you can link it to this device so the next step up would be value series it's very similar spec the hardware wise is exactly almost the same thing but the very big difference what you get with the value series you can actually have a raid so that means two drives mirroring each other if one drive fails the other one has a copy of your data otherwise with this single drive option you always need to think about the backup either to the cloud or external drive somewhere but with value series you get extras like um audio station so you can play music uh, on your phone or other devices you get like things like calendar chat and uh, cloud sync which is also actually available on the value series contacts you can get uh, download station which means you can download all sorts of things through torrents and also you get glacier backup hyper backup itunes server synology mail server so you can have your own mail server that's pretty cool or web server you can have media server with DLNA enabled, Plex, uh, MB, things like that. You can have Synology Office as well. You can replace your Google Office with this. Uh, you can have um, Synology uh, Video Station, which means you can install an app on your TV and uh, use that similar to Plex or Netflix and watch videos. You can have VPN server, or you can connect through VPN tail scale, for example, instead of using uh, Synology Proxy, which uh, it's called Quick Connect. So you can have direct connection and um, and then next step up would be plus series so that's when normally you get full range of uh, functionality and and apps on these things so you can get things like hybrid share um, replication service snapshots replication means that you can create certain uh, backups of your backups so you can roll back like uh, something similar to windows system restore the previous versions of things or similar to time machine as well uh, you can back up your cloud um, office like from Microsoft or Google uh, you can have install all sorts of apps like antivirus for example memcoffee you can have c2 identity identity age server you can have uh, a docker well now it's called container uh, station which means you can install all sorts of virtualization um, containers small uh, environments on your NAS so you can turn it into a smart home and and hundreds and thousands of other things. It's a really neat feature to have. Uh, the also you can install directory service, uh, high availability, which means you can connect two NASes together. If one NAS fails, another NAS takes over. Uh, it's a really neat feature. Synology Mail Plus is advanced um, mail server and uh, virtual machine manager, which means you can have actual virtual machine, not just container, but virtual machine installed on a NAS or multiple, multiple virtual machines. So that's the main difference. And so finally we can move on to pros of this device so the main pro is we can set it up in seconds literally i was thinking i'm going to be counting steps in order to set this thing up but the only step you have to do is scan the code at the bottom of this device that's it the rest of the stuff is plugging into a power socket and plugging into a router if that counts as a step or creating a um, synology account which you don't actually have to because you can use Google uh, account to 
log into their system. So it's literally just scanning the code, very easy. Other Pro would be supporting adapters and docking station, which was very handy. I could connect one docking station and connect uh, hard drives, USB sticks and uh, SD cards, and it, it would see those devices. So this way you can uh, add extra ports uh, at the back of this device because it has only two USB ports. That's very handy. Object recognition included. That's very handy as well. In value series, you don't get object recognition. But with this budget um, model, you actually get that included. A very low power consumption, much lower than uh, comparison to other devices from Synology. So it was around 7, 8 watts. Uh, IP config availability, that means you can set a manual IP address and uh, therefore you can connect it directly to your computer or any other device uh, in your network. That's a very handy feature to have. Um, the price of it is so cheap, it costs around I think $200. You'll be paying the same amount of money every year to get four to five terabytes of storage space in the cloud. So that's a uh, that's very good price. Email alerts, so for example, if you get uh, power loss, you'll get a notification to your email saying what's going on with your NAS. It's a very nice feature to have. Live photo support, so if you have uh, iPhone, for example, you have your those live photos also on Android phones, the same feature, but you can actually see those pictures live. You don't need to convert them into a video or something like that. Uh, cast option, that means if you go through your photos up, you can cast certain photos on the TV and then show other people what you got, your collections. Um, some editing, little slight editing, you can rotate files, things like that, edit uh, maybe f uh, tags and things like that. But at least that option is there. There's also a photo request, which is very handy. You can send out a link to your friends, for example, after a wedding or something, they will send all the pictures through to this uh, device, very easy. Also uh, freeing up the space option, which means if after you have uploaded all your photos from your phone to this thing, you can just click one button and clear your uh, storage space on your on your phone. It's a very handy feature. Um, mobile map view. I didn't see that on a P uh, on a web interface, but phone interface has actually a map view where you can see all the photos uh, based on geo location. So which country we you been? You can all filter it down. And uh, USB copy, that's a very handy feature because you can just plug that uh, USB drive into this device and it will already know what to do with it, where to back up this, uh, um, this data to. Each uh, USB device will have its own like ID, so it knows what to do. And then we can move on to bad things, which I didn't like. So USB 3, uh, it's kind of good, but it's only five gigabit. But based on the fact that there is a hard drive inside, which uh, supports probably maximum speed up to 150, 200 megabytes anyway. I'll um, forgive that. Um, then the other limitation is eight uh, users. You can only invite eight, eight users, no more. Uh, no bare metal backup. With Plus Series, you could actually back up um, your entire Windows system folders and things like that. With this one, you can't. You can only synchronize a certain folder you want to. Um, there is no 2.5 gigabit LAN. This is something everyone start uh, moving towards too already. Uh, the other disadvantage is four terabyte limit. I wish there was eight terabyte uh, option. Um, no dual bait, that's very important. So there is no actual per se backup. If that drive fails inside and you have no another copy, that l the data is gone. So I wish there was at least um, two 2.5 inch drives or two NVMe drives inside in the mirror, but it, there, there is no such an option. Then we move on to uh, no TV app, like either photo or video. They could have linked it with video station and photos app, which already exist on, on TV, but for some reason they decided to create their own version of the same thing, so it doesn't really work. The other feature which is missing is the LNA, so you could easily integrate this hard drive with uh, built-in media playback uh, software in the TV, what you normally find. Without the LNA, you need to use um, SMB-based apps. So there is a, a, a way around it, but um, the LNA would be much easier to handle. Uh, now Google Photo Backup, that's a feature which QNAP has. 
they can straight away pull files down from the Google Photos onto the uh, NASIS. This one can do this. The user interface, it could be explained a little bit better what each option means, like external USB or USB copy, and that it doesn't say exactly what these mean. Also about desktop clients, Mac, I tried that uh, file sync up on the Mac and it was not playing very well. I have the latest OS version, the same with Windows 11. It also didn't want to play the game. The mobile uh, photos backup app, it does not back up the photos if you close the app. You need to keep it open all the time. Uh, WD does allow closing the app and the backups will still happen. With this one you need to put on a charger, put on the shelf and back up all your photos. It takes some time. The other feature which I thought should be there is uh, backing up your device to another Synology NAS, like standard DSM Plus Series or another uh, NAS, because Plus Series NASes have active backup for business option, which means they can pull data of the other devices, servers, Linuxes, Windows, whatever you can think of, or virtual machines even. But somehow this one, this this NAS will not talk to Plus Series NASes, so it's like very. Uh, distant, it's like a separate from from their original range, so they don't talk to each other. The other thing which is missing is a check button for USB drives. I could not find it, maybe it's somewhere hidden, but I could not find a way to inject the USB drive after backing up. Also a very handy feature missing is Wake on LAN with a normal Synology based on DSM. I have Wake on LAN enabled, which means most of the time my NAS is off, or completely shut down. Whenever I need to have access to it, I would use Quick Connect to connect it, and that will wake it to wake it up, and then it will boot, and I can have access to my data. This one does not have this option; it runs all the time. Then about the noise, the hard drive inside it is very quiet, but if it's in your living room and you happen to, to sleep in a living room, this sound will annoy you. Definitely, they're supposed to use SSD in there, either. M.2 SATA or NVMe or laptop type of drives, but something like that would have worked better. 4 terabyte is available in SSD form as well. And the last thing is C2 Cloud Backup Limit. It costs 299 a year to back it up, this 4 to, four to 5 terabytes of data to Synology Cloud. That's uh, way too much. And they do not allow backing up this NAS to cloud other cloud platforms the only way you can back it up is external usb or their cloud so you want offsite backup but this has been um, a review and pros and cons about this uh, device you can tell me what you think about it put uh, your comments in the comment section and uh, and let us know otherwise thanks for watching and see you next time